the conductor simulator and we're going to use it to answer a couple of questions about how semiconductors behave when you put them into electric circuits. So I'm actually going to start out with one segment so that we can see the behavior of both p-type materials and n-type materials. Over here on the left is an energy diagram. So this is down in the uh, valence bands of the material and up here is the conduction bands and then this white space in the middle is the energy gap between those sets of bands. So if we just fill this with p-type material and then turn the battery on, so I'll put it up to, I don't know, one and a half volts, like a regular D cell. Notice that uh, I have charge that is moving here down in this band. And if I reverse the battery, go to negative 1.5 volts, I get current going in the opposite direction and it flows just fine throughout this circuit. If I take that material out and replace it with an n-type semiconductor, I still get current flowing in this circuit. Now just the electrons are flowing up here in the conduction band of the n-type material, but that works just fine to conduct electricity. And if we reverse the battery, Current also flows in the other direction. So a single semiconducting material by itself uh, does not prohibit current from flowing in the circuit uh, and acts like a conductor or at least a partial conductor uh, in this circuit. Now what happens if we put two of these materials together? So we still have a 1.5 volt battery here and I'm going to put a p-type uh, material on the left and an n-type material on the right and observe what happens both in the energy states uh, and in the behavior of this system. So you'll notice that the current flows initially for a little while, uh, but then stops, and this is the diode that we've talked about in previous discussions. When you completely fill up the valence band, the conduction band is empty, and the electrons do not have enough energy to jump up to the higher band to keep flowing. If we reverse uh, whoop, go in the wrong direction. If we reverse the voltage of the battery in this setup, however, current flows just fine because the current that's coming into this junction is in the higher energy state in the conduction band, drops down in energy to jump down into the p-type material on the left and keeps flowing. And this is the classic diode that we've talked about before. If we reverse things and put N on the left and P on the right, this flow is going to get quickly cut off. But if we flip the battery back in the other direction, once again, we're going to get a normal amount of current to flow. So this together is a model of a diode, and unfortunately the simulator limits you only to two segments. If we were able to put three segments in here, uh, we might be able to see the behavior of a transistor. However, a transistor, as we'll talk about today, requires another piece to the system. Uh, but at least the junction of the PN uh, dopant can be observed in this simulation.